It's the road to Big Sur. It's a beautiful drive, by the way. We're on our way to installing Mac OS 11, the third in our series. Let's talk about backup next. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Now, you're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by Peak Design. Peak has just launched their 10th campaign on Kickstarter, Mobile by Peak Design. To learn more, go to peakdesign.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Surely by now, Big Sur has come out. I'm recording this uh, at the beginning of the month. Here we are, October 23rd. But if it hasn't, <laughs> all right, we're going to continue getting ready for the install. I hope you weren't impetuous if it has come out uh, and didn't just install it right away. There are certainly some things to do. The first episode of this series, we talked about moving your data onto an external drive. Uh, the second, we talked about compatibility. Here we are in our third, and we're going to talk about backing up because no matter how you're installing, as I mentioned in the first two episodes of this series, I'm going to do a clean install this time. I want to install, you know, wipe everything on the drive. And this is good to do every year or so uh, because you're going to get a much better install. There won't be a lot of cruft lying around, especially things that are incompatible. We talked about that last week with Big Sur, and there are some things that are incompatible with Big Sur. But this week I'm going to talk about backup. Whether you're wiping your drive to install or not, Backup is really important. You should make a copy of everything on your drive before you install Big Sur in case it goes wrong. Now, I want to talk about this site. I've, I've mentioned it many times before. My friend Peter Krogh, who's a photographer, created this with the American Society of Media Photographers. It's at dpbestflow.org. And uh, it's also uh, funded by the Library of Congress, which, you know, I don't know if you know this, but one of the things librarians spend a lot of time thinking about is how to make archival copies of books and other documents, how to keep stuff around forever. That's kind of backup, too. Peter's backup uh, section is here, best practices. Um, I would read some of this because it's a good idea to understand uh, why you're backing up, where people often go wrong, and how important some kinds are. But this is where the thing I've referred to so many times, the 321 backup comes from. 321 is Peter's idea, three copies of everything, a primary and two backups. Remember, if you delete the original, your backups are the originals. <laughs> So three copies, two different media types, such as hard drives and optical media, to protect against different types of hazards. And you'll solve that a little bit by having one local and then one copy. This is the one in 321 stored off-site. That is super important. Uh, if there's a fire, a flood, a tornado, somebody comes and steals all your stuff, you want to have a backup of your most important data somewhere not on site, whether it's a safe deposit box, I just make a copy and bring it to work, or one of the cloud backup solutions. There's quite a few. That's always a good idea. Uh, Peter spends some time talking about the threats. This is the kind of thing people don't like to think about. What could go wrong? You're planning for disaster, but honestly, if you don't plan for disaster, disaster happens. Now you're really in trouble. He also talks about things we don't normally think about, uh, like life cycle and so forth. Depending on your interest in backup, this is well worth reading. But the summary, the most important thing is we need to make a copy of our data on our computer, uh, keep one locally so it's easily accessible, and then one off-site so that it's safe. That's the most important. Three copies, two different kinds of media, one of them off-site. So keep that in mind. I suggest making an image copy of your entire internal drive. That's what I'm going to do before I um, uh, uh, wipe the drive. I want to have a way to go back to Catalina to just go, you know, if this didn't work, I don't like Big Sur, whatever. 
I can go back to the way it was. That means making an image copy. For that, there's a Mac program that every Mac user should own from Shirt Pocket Software. It's called Super Duper. And it is the single most useful backup utility at all. Here's the key of Super Duper. You pick the internal drive, and I'm going to back this up to, and in this case, I don't have an external drive hooked up, but if I had an external drive, and this might be worth going out, and I think everybody should probably own an external drive that's the size of your internal drive. Super Duper will make what's called an image copy, a bit-for-bit -bit copy of your internal drive on that external drive, but it'll go one step farther. It can make it bootable. That's really an important resource to have because if your internal drive dies, especially if you're on a laptop or an iMac, it's not easy to replace. Having an external bootable drive with all your stuff on it could save your life. Nowadays, external drives on Macintosh systems can be connected via Thunderbolt 3. They're a little more expensive when you do that, but they can be just as fast, maybe even a little faster than an internal drive. So... It's a really important thing. If, if, if I were you, and certainly I've done this, I would go out, Seagate makes them, uh, you can get, a, get them from other world computing, buy an external Thunderbolt 3 drive uh, that's the same capacity as your internal drive. Then use Super Duper to make a bootable copy of your internal drive. You can even have Super Duper run in the background on a schedule, which is really handy, uh, because then that way it can uh, update it periodically, and you'll always have an updated, bootable version of your internal drive. There's one other thing I, I want to mention um, uh, on copying that's really important when you're backing up, and you'll see there's a lot of uh, choices here. Uh, you want to make a backup that only copies content, not deletes content. So when you're using synchronizing programs, one way a synchronizing program can work is making an exact copy of your internal drive externally, even down to deleting files that you delete on the internal drive. You could see that's a very bad idea for backup. If I accidentally delete the copy of my great American novel on the internal drive and the sync program then deletes it on the external drive, I don't have a backup unless you made one in the cloud. You made one in the cloud, right? So you can see the problem there. So when you're making these external copies, it's always a good idea to check to see if there's a setting. You do not want to copy deletions. So in time, that external drive will actually get bigger than your internal drive because even though you've deleted files on the internal drive, they're all still there on the external drive. Really important. You really want that. So remember... Do not synchronize deletions. You're always going to want to have that copy be one way files from the internal drive to the external drive. You never want to delete anything on the external drive. Super Duper will do that. And uh, it's a very handy program to have. So I would go out and spend the uh, 30, 35 bucks to get Super Duper. I bought this back in 2006. I'm embarrassed almost to admit it uh, and paid for it once. And I'm still using it with the same serial number. Maybe I had to send that guy some money because this thing has saved my bacon more than once. It's Super Duper from Shirt pocket software. So make an image copy. If you're using Time Machine, that's good too. Um, but I would do both. I wouldn't rely on Time Machine. I've had enough bad experiences with Time Machine that it's probably better to have a direct image copy of your internal drive. In fact, before you install Big Sur, disconnect your Time Machine drive, your external drive, any backups, I would disconnect all USB devices that you don't need. Obviously, your keyboard and mouse you're going to need. But disconnect all of them before you do the operating system upgrade. There's a number of reasons it's best not to have those external devices connected. For instance, one of the things the upgrade is probably going to do, uh, I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not sure, is attempt to upgrade your Time Machine disk to the new Apple file system, APFS. Time Machine, until... The most recent version, Big Sur, uh, was an HFS Plus disk. They are now going to make it an APFS disk. But that's a risky process all by itself. You don't want to do that with your time machine backup if you're going to rely on it. Unplug the time machine before you do the Big Sur upgrade. So we, we've made a good copy backup uh, of our stuff. 
uh, ideally, we've made two copies of it, one in the cloud. You can have Time Machine and uh, an external image as well. It's nice to have that image, again, because you can boot to it. If anything goes wrong, you can get right back to work just by booting to the external drive. Remember, you hold down the Option key when you're booting up. There's another thing you might want to do. This I won't be doing, but if you're not doing a clean install as I'm doing, if you're installing Big Sur on top of Catalina, you're going to want to go to the About This Mac uh, menu item. Once again, that's under the Apple menu. About this Mac. And you're going to want to go to the storage section. This shows what's on your drive. And this manage button is going to be a good friend here. This is uh, important to check through this to make sure that your data is doing what you think it's doing. Optimize storage empty trash. You can even use this to reduce clutter. These, look at that. I have 673 gigabytes of files that it says you probably don't need these. Probably a good idea to look at these. Some of these I do want, but this is something to keep in mind. This is going to help you clean up that disk. And if we're installing on top, you definitely want to get rid of stuff that you don't need. Downloads, Apps that are no longer supported, this is your chance to delete those 32-bit apps and so forth. So this is a useful tool. You can even look by uh, category. So I can look at the applications. I can look at my cloud drive. I can look at mail, messages, etc. And this storage uh, is a very useful way to clean up. So again, that's under the Apple menu, about this Mac. Click the Storage tab and press the Manage button. You'll need some free space, obviously, to install Big Sur. Uh, it's not completely clear how much free space right now. I believe Apple said something like 32 plus gigabytes. So you, that's another thing you're going to want to do. Make sure you have, I would say, at least 50 gigabytes free on that, ex, uh, that hard drive before you try to install. Again, if, if you can... You know, you can go through this whole process, wipe that internal drive. If you've moved your data drive off, this is very easy to do. Wipe that internal drive, and then you don't have to worry about how much free space you have. You'll get a cleaner install, too. There won't be leftover stuff from previous operating systems. So this is really useful, that Manage button under the Storage tab right there. That can help you clean things up quite a bit. Uh, a couple of things I'm going to do because I'm doing a clean install that you might want to do as well. I want to make a note of everything that I have installed on my Macintosh. Uh, a few episodes ago, we talked about Homebrew, which is the Macintosh package manager, and we talked about Brewfile. Brewfile will let you make a text file with all the apps you've installed. And if you're using Moss, uh, it'll actually have all the apps you've installed from the Apple Store. If you use Cask and other uh, brew techniques to install GUI apps, it'll have all of those too. In a way, it's doing an inventory of all your applications. And you can even, if you go back and look at the episode, turn on comments so you'll know line by line everything that's on your Macintosh. I'll show you what my brew file looks like. Uh, that's really handy. If you run that, dump your brew file so that it's up to date, the minute, you know, right before you install, uh, you'll have a way to quickly and easily reinstall the apps you want. It's probably a good idea to actually edit your brew file and, uh, and make sure, let's see, what should I open this with? BB Edit. It needs to be opened with a plain text editor. And I'll just give you an example of, of what my brew file looks like. It, because I've turned on comments, I can actually see what some of these things do. Uh, and this would be a good time to go through this. And it's just a text file, so you can actually, you can say, oh, I don't need that anymore. You can delete those lines. So this is, this is very handy. These are all the things I have currently installed on my Mac. And as I said, if you've installed the Mac App Store command line, which is MAS, you'll also have the App Store stuff. Here they are. These are the MAS files, Acorn Amadeus Pro. You can go through these. Probably a good idea to delete stuff you no longer want to install. I don't need this closure CL. I can delete that. It won't install that. But this is really a whoops. This is a really handy way to uh, make an inventory of all the apps installed in your system. You probably also want to, if you are using Time Machine, uh, explicitly update Time Machine. Make sure everything's backed up. You've made an image backup 
Uh, you might even want to make an image uh, of your data disk just for extra prudence so that you have that somewhere. You're backing that up anyway, right? This is a good time to start thinking about your backup uh, strategy so that once you get this nice, clean install, Big Sur is running beautifully, you have a system that automatically is backing up. So remember that 3 two, one backup you want to have. A time machine backup locally, that's great. Maybe use Super Duper to make a bootable disk so you always can boot. And then have some system, iDrive, the sponsor, our sponsor, or uh, um, maybe your network attached storage, making an off-site backup as well so that you have those three, two, one backups, one of them off-site. And uh, that's a good thing to set up now as you install Big Sur. Have it run automatically on schedule from now on so you never have to think about it again. Our show today brought to you by a brand new sponsor, but a good old friend, Peak Design. They've just launched their 10th campaign. It's called Mobile by Peak Design. It's an ecosystem of cases, mounts, and accessories that make your phone a better tool for everything you do. These accessories use SlimLink which has been added to their new everyday phone case. When paired with your mobile device, it connects with accessories like, well, a wallet with a built-in kickstand, a machined aluminum tripod, and so much more. Mobile from Peak Design. To learn more about the campaign and, of course, all the other amazing products, head to peakdesign.com slash twit. Support Peak Design. Visit peakdesign.com slash twit. I think we're ready. We've checked compatibility. We've got an external data drive. We've eliminated the cruft from our operating system and our, our files. Uh, we've eliminated incompatibilities like K extensions. I think we're ready to install Big Sur. Now, I don't know if Big Sur is going to come out before the next episode of this show. If it does, episode four of The Road to Big Sur will be the actual install process. If it's not out by the time we tape again in a couple of weeks, I will uh, I will defer episode four until Big Sur is out. But that will be the fourth and final episode. We'll actually do the install so you can see the process step by step. As I mentioned, it's probably not a good idea to jump on that upgrade to Big Sur just yet. I'd wait for a little while, maybe the update to the update of Big Sur as we talked about last week. Are you ready? Are you excited? I think Big Sur is going to be a very worthwhile upgrade, especially as we get to new Apple hardware, the new Apple Silicon. Pretty soon, if we haven't already seen it, as I said, I'm recording this at the beginning of the month. It might be by uh, October 23rd we've already seen new Mac hardware. I suspect not. Uh, but once we do, I think uh, it's going to be a very exciting time to be a Macintosh user. And that's why Hands on Mac exists. Thanks for watching. And have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on Twit.tv, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show, and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that and you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.